What are number bonds? Why are they so important in Singapore math? Hi everyone! In this practical math video, we are going to learn about number bonds and see how useful they are to us. After going through this video, you can hop onto our website and see how well you have mastered these number bonds. Alright? Now what are number bonds? Here's how a number bond actually looks like. As you can see, a number bond is made up of three circles and two lines. We start by drawing a circle on the top and two lines away from it. And each of this line is joined to another circle. Imagine a person holding out two hands. Can you picture that? Now number bonds can be drawn in many different ways. Sometimes, the number bond that you see can have two circles on the top that are each connected to the same circle below, just like a person who's putting out his hands. And sometimes, the number bond you see may have two circles on the left and each one of them connects to a common circle on the right. Just like a person who's stretching out his hands to the left. And yep, sometimes you might see the person turning in the opposite direction. In any case, the circle with the two hands sticking out will always represent the whole. This hole refers to everything that you have. Just like how you have a whole apple, or a whole glass of water, or a whole piece of cookie. Then what about the other circles? Well, each of these circles who's joined to the hole stands for a part of the hole. So just like when you cut a whole apple into two pieces, you end up with two parts. Or if you pour a glass of water into two cups, you end up with two parts too. Understand so far? So the big idea that you need to know about number bonds is that when we put two parts together, we make up a whole. So far so good? Now that we have learned what a number bond is, let's look at an example to help us understand how it works. Alright? So say we have three pieces of candies and seven pieces of candies. These three pieces of candies that we have is part of everything that we have. Correct? So let's write the number three in one of these parts. Then what about the other seven pieces of candies? The other seven pieces of candies are also a part of everything that we have. And can you guess what we are going to do? If you said write the number seven in this other part here, you're totally right. Okay, when we put these two parts together, three candies and seven candies, how many candies do you think we have all together? Let's count, alright? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 candies in all, and they look really delicious. So since 10 candies are all that we have, we are going to write the number 10 into the circle on the top. And this represents the whole, remember? Looks like our number bond is complete. And by looking at this, what can you tell? Are you able to see that 3 and 7 make 10? Let's look at another number bond example, alright? So that you can be really sure about how they work. This time round, we have 4 shiny gold coins and 5 shiny gold coins. So do we call each of them a part or a whole? If you said each of them is a part, great job at paying attention. Since we know that number 4 is a part, and the number 5 forms another part, we put the numbers in the circles that represent the parts. So far so good. Then what should we do to complete the number bond? Do you know what's the missing hole? Let's count how many shiny gold coins we have when we put the coins together. Okay, looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 gold coins. Well, someone's getting rich. Now that we have the number 9, do you know where it goes? It goes into the circle on the top. So now we know that when we have a part of 4 and a part of 5, we'll end up having a total of 9. Understand so far? Do you see why we need to learn number bonds now? Looking at the two number bonds that we made earlier on, can you see that these number bonds are like pictures that help us with addition? The first number bond tells us that 3 and 7 make 10. And we can translate this into a math addition sentence. Let's see how we do that. Well, 3 and 7 make 10. Let's keep the numbers and change the words into something that we use in math to stand for the same idea. Alright? So we'll keep the number 3, 7 and 10. When we see the word N in English, it usually means to put some things together. Correct? And we are going to use the plus sign to add the number 3 and 7. Then what about the word make? We are going to turn this into an equal sign. See what we have now? We have magically turned 3 and 7 makes 10 into a math addition sentence 3 plus 7 equal 10. What we are saying is that one part plus another part gives us the whole. 7 is a part and 3 is a part. 
and when we put the parts together, we'll get a whole and that's 10. The order of 7 and 3 doesn't really matter. We could also say 7 plus 3 equals 10 and we'll still be correct. Falling so far? Now it's your turn to get your hands dirty. Look at the second number bond that we wrote. Can you guess how to write the two math addition sentences for that? I'll give you 5 seconds to figure this out. Are you ready? So what are the parts of the number bond? Did you spot 4 and 5? If you did, fantastic job! Now how much do we get when we put the parts together? 4 and 5 makes 9, correct? So we'll have 9, and 9 makes up the whole. Since we know that a part plus another part gives us a whole, we could either write 4 plus 5 equals 9, or 5 plus 4 equals 9. Did you get them right? Now let's learn another interesting thing about number bonds. Do you know that besides helping you with addition, number bonds can help you with subtraction too? Now the big idea behind subtraction is this. We know what the whole is, and we know one of the parts that it's made of. But what we don't know is the other missing part. So it's kind of like solving a puzzle. If we have all the pieces of a puzzle, we can add them up to form the whole picture. But if we want to have the whole picture, and we only have one part of the puzzle, we need to find the other missing part to complete the picture. Correct? Now let's see how number bonds help us with subtraction in this example. Say we have 10 ends on the table. Ew. And we got rid of 7 ends by sweeping them away. Do you know how many ends are still on the table? As you can see, this time round, instead of starting off with parts, we started off with a hole. Correct? We know that we have 10 ends at first. Then what happens? We got rid of one part of the ends, which is made up of 7 ends. And that's how we are left with the other part, which happens to be the missing one. So how do we find the number of ends that make up the other part? Well, that's where subtraction comes in. To find how many ends make up the other part, we'll take everything we have, which is the whole, and subtract one of the parts from it. And when we do that, the other missing part will be left. So how many ends do we get when we subtract 7 from 10? We have 10 ends here, and then we say bye to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, by 7 ends. So it looks like we have 1, 2, 3. 3 ends left. And how do we translate this into a math subtraction sentence? To do that, we'll start by writing the whole. So do you know what number to write? We started off with 10 ends, correct? So let's write the number 10. Next, we got rid of one part of 7 ends. So we are going to use the minus sign to tell us that we are getting rid of one part. And what's that part? 7, correct? And finally, we are left with, we use the equal sign here. How many ends do we have in the end? 3, correct? So let's write 3. So this is how the subtraction sentence should look like. 10 minus 7 equals 3. So what we are saying is that, when we take away a part of a whole, we are left with the other missing part. So since we know that 3 and 7 are parts of 10, we could also write 10 minus 3 equals to 7. Since taking one part away from the whole, we'll surely leave you with the other part. And guess what? Does this look awfully familiar? This number bond is exactly the same one that we have seen before. Do you remember? That's pretty amazing. Now you know that the same number bond can show the relationship between both addition and subtraction. To write an addition statement, we'll add the parts to give us the whole. And to write a subtraction statement, we'll subtract a part from the whole to find the missing part. And this is another useful thing about number bonds. Depending on the situation and what we have, we can use these number bonds to help us decide if we should add or subtract. Now here's a little test. If you're missing the whole, what do you think we should do? Should we add or subtract the parts? I hope you say add. And if you are missing a part, what do we do to find the other part? That's right, we'll subtract the part that we know from the whole. And that's it for this practical math video on number bonds. To make sure you have learned the basic of number bonds for primary 1 and primary 2, be sure to check out the practice questions on addition and subtraction in practical, alright? Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, happy problem solving!